Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr and I know I haven't made a few videos lately but I'm back and I'm ready to talk about extroverted sensing. And what I've found about extroverted sensing is this is the function of for the five senses. Often this is a function that has largely been stereotyped. Yes, overall people tend to neglect or stereotype upon the activities of this function. I would argue in this video that extroverted sensing can be divided into three different areas. And the first is environmental scanning. Environmental scanning for extroverted sensing is about knowing your surroundings. There is always an urge or a craving in an extroverted sensing type to know what is happening around you. Who are the people around me? What do they look like? What are they doing? What is the current situation? Where am I? There is a constant reorientation process going on with extroverted sensing. A constant desire to know where you are and what your environment looks like and to be awake and attentive. Yes, this is a process often associated with energy, with being awake, being attentive, being on the ball, being ready to move, ready to act. Extroverted sensing, secondly, is a hungry function. It's a craving function. It's driven by interest. It's driven by desire and hunger. So, unlike the introverted sensing function, which is driven by tradition, routine and stability, extroverted sensing is a lot more on the prowl. It's a hunting function. It's always looking for something that will pique its interest. Something that smells good. Something that looks good. Something that is visually appealing, something that is tasty. Always trying to get its hands on things, always trying to know and reorient itself and its surroundings, always trying to immerse itself with sensory stimuli. Extroverted sensing is a hedonistic function in many ways. I'm not talking here about the ideology of seeking pleasure to be happy, but the idea of more the drive to be, to fulfill your urges. So, in many ways, extorted sensing dominance tend to look at introverted intuitives as dissatisfied, displeased, as people who don't have enough. While extorted sensing types tend to be the people who are the most pleased, the most uh, smug, the most happy and content in their situation. Because they are always getting this new stimuli, they are always getting what they want, always going for what they want. And this brings us into the third area of extorted sensing. Extroverted sensing is a wild, it's a raw, it's a literal function. It's a function driven by being untamed. Whereas introverted sensing is a lot about following order or a set structure. Extroverted sensing has no order in this sense. Extroverted sensing is wild. It goes on instinct and cravings. If it finds something that it can get its hands on, it's going to want to get its hands on it. It's also raw and crude in many ways. It's a more sexual, more concrete, more tangible function. So when you, an extroverted sensor describes something, it's often in a more concrete way. It talks about the exact uh, look, uh, the extract, exact feel, the exact item they are interested in. They are on the ball, they are not metaphorical, they are very on point. With INFJs and INTJs you'll notice a lot of the time these people tend to be very unaware of this function and its influence on them. A lot of the time I think INFJs and INTJs, especially younger INFJs and INTJs, tend to be completely unaware of how they use this function. But other people can see it very strongly in you. They can notice when you are in that sense of heightened activity and presence. They can notice, excuse my cat who is rolling around right now. They can notice and uh, pay close attention to things. And when other people bring up, what are you looking at? What is it you want? Are you looking at my food? Are you hungry? An INFJ or an ITEA will be like, no, no I'm not. <laughs> And that's kind of it. It's, it's a presence that you are often completely unaware of, but which always influences your actions and your choices. So a lot of the time, yes, INFJs and INTJs can also show a lot of these traits, but they don't tend to want to associate with it. 
introverted intuition compared to extroverted sensing is about detachment from your surroundings. It's about darkness, it's about the kind of uh, freedom from thought, freedom from stimulation, freedom from sensory experience. And in that sense, uh, freedom from your body, so you can look bigger and outside your own body. Now, in these things, we tend to notice there is always a clash. So these functions have a rival nature. They are always trying to topple one another, and one always comes at the expense of the other, even if you can switch between them. What you'll find is that overall, extroverted sensing has a very important influence in navigation, in energy, in all kinds of activities. You'll note this, for example, that introverted intuitives who lack extroverted sensing tend to be very sleepy types. They tend to be a little drowsy, a little dazed, a little lost. While extroverted sensors tend to be knowing exactly where they are, they tend to be very uh, energetic, very loud, very real, very concrete, very in the moment, very much on stage. They are stage types, they like to be in the center of an activity rather than on the outskirts looking at it or studying it. So. Considering all of this, how do you notice extorted sensing in your life? How do you use this function? Have you ever noticed its influence on you? Or have you ever felt that you were kind of being taken over by this function? Because that can happen too. These are my questions for you. Thank you all for watching.